Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV and also welcome back to my Linux Crash Course series. In every episode, what I do in this series is I cover one important and foundational concept around Linux one video at a time. And in today's video, what we're going to do is talk about file archiving. And as part of that particular topic, we're going to cover the gzip and tar commands. Now, even though I literally just told you guys that in this series we go over one concept at a time, these are completely different commands, but I think you'll understand by the end of the video why it's almost impossible to talk about one without talking about the other, especially considering that the tar command combined with the gzip command gives you the ability to create compressed archive files. But before we get into that, I want to take a moment to mention the sponsor for the Linux Crash Course series, Linode. And with the platform that Linode provides, you could get your very own Linux server up and running in minutes. And one of the reasons why that's so easy to do with Linode is because they are a Linux-focused cloud server provider. When it comes to available distributions of Linux, they have all the staples, distros such as Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, CentOS, even Arch Linux. And Linode's platform gives you access to all of the popular features around cloud computing, which includes, but isn't limited to, object storage, block storage, containers, DNS, and especially Linux instances, but not just any Linux instances, they have an entire marketplace that enables you to spin up Linux apps quickly and easily. Another use case for Linode's platform is actually spinning up Linux servers to go along with the tutorial videos in this series, because all of the individual distributions that I cover in this series are also covered by Linode. And thank you so much to Linode for sponsoring this entire series, as well as countless other videos on this channel. I really appreciate it. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started, and I'll show you the tar and gzip commands, which together give you a full solution that you can use to archive files on your Linux server. So let's go ahead and start off by looking at basic usage of the tar command. But in order to get started, what we'll need are some files to work with. On your end, it really doesn't matter which files you use. As long as you have access and permission to those files, you should be fine. And it's probably best that you don't work with production data. We want some temporary files or example files to use instead. So what I'll do is just make a copy of the Etsy directory. And as an aside, that's probably a very good folder to back up. Anyway, I'll type space and then dot because what that'll do is tell the interpreter here that I want to copy this entire directory to my current working directory. And I use sudo because by default, your normal user account will not have access to all of the files within Etsy. So I'll clear the screen and I'll list the storage and we can see the Etsy directory right here. So we were able to copy that entire directory. But to avoid any potential problems, what I'll do is I'll just change the ownership such that my user owns this entire directory. And what that'll do is avoid us having to use sudo every time we want to actually use an example. And even though the concept of changing ownership is beyond the scope of this video, I have a dedicated video that goes over this, this will actually still make it easier for us because we'll see fewer errors while we work with the example commands that I'm about to give you. So what I'll do is type sudo chown. I'll use my username, colon, and then the group name, dash capital R. I want this to be recursive, and I'll execute this against the Etsy directory. And specifically, I'm running this against the copied version of the Etsy directory, not slash Etsy. Make sure you don't type a slash right here. Otherwise, you're definitely going to mess some things up. We want to execute all of the commands against the copy of the Etsy directory. And since it's just a copy, it's not going to disturb the real thing. So if I do a long listing, we can see that my user owns the local backup copy of Etsy. So with that, we actually have a directory that we can work with and use for the examples I'm about to show you. So let's go ahead and see the tar command in action. But first of all, what exactly does the tar command do anyway? Well, actually what the tar command allows us to do is combine multiple files into one archive file. You can actually think of it as being similar to a zip file, but the main difference between tar and a zip file is that a tar file isn't compressed. 
Whatever size the files are is the same size that they're going to be even when they're archived. But with that archive file, we can back up or move everything that's contained inside that archive file all in one shot. So there's still value, and there is a way to compress the tar file, which I will be showing you before the end of the video. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to create a tar file. As you recall, we have the Etsy directory right there. So how would we actually create an archive of that entire directory or whatever directory you want to create an archive of? Well, first of all, what we'll do is we'll type tar and then the first option that we'll give it is dash C. And dash C, what that does is it tells the tar command that we want to create a new archive. Next, we'll add the dash F option. And we don't actually have to type dash F here because when you combine options together, you only actually need one dash and then you can combine the rest of the options. And what the dash F option does is that tells tar that you want to provide a file name. So what I'm going to do is call mine Etsy backup tar. I think that's a perfectly reasonable name for a backup of the Etsy directory. So as you can see, the first file name that we'll give it is the file name of the tar file that we want to work with or create if it doesn't already exist. Next, what we'll do is give the tar command a directory that we want to create an archive of. Now, it's actually right here in my home directory, as you've already seen. It's just a copy of the Etsy directory that's also named Etsy. So when I press enter, what we should have is a tarball or tar file of the Etsy directory. So I'll press enter. And if I list the storage again, you can see that we have the Etsy directory right here, just like we did before. And now we have a tar file that is a backup of that directory. Now we didn't actually get much output here, did we? Well, in fact, we really didn't receive any output. We executed this command right here to create our tar file. And that was it. It just simply returned us to the command prompt. And then we were able to execute another command. Now you can safely ignore the lack of output for now, because some of the commands that I'm going to be giving you some of the other examples are going to produce a lot more output. But for right now, let's just focus on the fact that we were able to create our very own tar file by using the tar command with the dash C and the dash F option. We gave it a file name for the tar file that we wanted to create. And then we gave it the directory that we wanted to go ahead and actually archive. Now, if that directory was located somewhere else, then we would have needed to provide a full path to that directory. But in my case, the Etsy directory is here locally in my working directory. So I was able to type simply Etsy and that worked just fine. So let's go ahead and see some additional examples of the tar command. But real quick, what I want to do is just point out the fact that I didn't actually have to name it Etsy backup tar. You could name your tar file anything you want. In fact, you don't even have to include the extension. I like to do that because that lets everybody know what kind of file it is. If you don't include .tar in the file name, that could be a little confusing, but it's not required. So if you have a reason to not include .tar, well, I guess you could actually go ahead and omit that. I'm going to keep using it on my end because that's standard practice to include the .tar file extension when you're creating a .tar file. Now let's go ahead and address the lack of output when it comes to the creation of the .tar file. Personally, on my end, what I like to do is see exactly what the tar command or any other command for that matter is actually doing. I need to make sure that the tar file contains exactly what I think it does. So let's go ahead and look at an example of how we can actually look at a tar file, look at what's inside the tar file without actually extracting it. We don't want to extract the file. We just want to know what's inside of it. So to do that, I'll type tar. And the first option that I'm going to use in this example is dash T. And what dash T allows us to do is get a listing for the files that are inside a tar file. But just like before, in order for us to actually work with a tar file, we need to tell the tar command that we intend to give it a path or a file name of an existing tar file. And we'll do that by adding the dash F option here. And then finally, we give it the name of the tar file. When I press enter, what's going to happen is it's going to dump a bunch of text to the screen basically one line for every one file that's in the tar file. So I'll press enter. Let's see it in action. So as you can see, a lot of output actually printed to the terminal. It's a listing of all of the files that are contained inside the tar file. 
So this is useful if you download a tar file and you want to see what's inside of it without extracting it, or perhaps you want to just find out, was the previous tar command actually successful? Are the files that you intend to be in the tar file actually inside it? Now, I'm not going to expect you to go ahead and, you know, look through every line here because there's going to be a lot of lines here. In fact, what I'll do, and this wasn't even planned, this is completely unscripted, I'm going to give you a bonus. I'm going to pipe the output into the word count command, and I'll use the dash L option. What that does is it gives us a count of the lines in the output, the number of lines in the output. So there's 3,093 items inside that tar file. So no, I'm not trying to have you guys go through each and every single file, but if there is something in particular that you wanted to make sure was part of that, you could definitely go through and look for that particular file. Now, another command that I want to give you guys is actually pretty much exactly the same. But what I'm going to do is add one more option. I'll add dash V to the mix, and that stands for verbose. Verbose mode is something that many Linux commands actually have available, and generally speaking, what that allows us to do is receive even more information. Now, as far as what type of additional information we might see, that depends on the individual command, because every command, they utilize the verbose option differently. But when I press enter, I think you'll tell the difference immediately. Let's see. Now, as you can see, the output fills the entire screen. And that's because we have additional columns here that we didn't have before. Without the dash V option, we simply get a listing of files. But when we provide the dash V option to the tar command, when we're checking the contents of a tar file, we'll see additional columns. For example, this column right here, we have the permission string. We also have the owning user and owning group, which of course is going to be me straight across the board because earlier I changed the ownership of everything inside the local copy directory to my name, so that's actually expected. And what we're seeing here is all the same information that we would see if we were doing a directory listing, you know, the ls command against files in a directory. We see modification times, modification dates, already mentioned ownership and permissions and things like that. So honestly, I pretty much always use dash v when I'm using tar for most of the examples. I just really don't see any reason not to use the dash v option. This is information that might be valuable. Now, so far, all of the examples that I've shown you are examples of creating a new tar file. But what if you want to extract a tar file to, I don't know, maybe restore something from backup? Now, what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to remove the Etsy directory, not slash Etsy, but the local version. I'll just do rm-rf against the local copy of Etsy that's going to remove that folder and it's going to go away without a trace. So as an aside, definitely make sure you're careful with the RM command, but I want to start from scratch here. So I'll press enter. And as you can see, the Etsy directory is gone. But what if I didn't want it to go away? What if removing it was a mistake? Well, thankfully for me, I have a backup of it. And that's beside the point that I could simply create another copy of the Etsy directory. So I didn't really lose anything. But if this was a directory that contained something important and it did legitimately get deleted, well, restoring from backup is really the only thing that I can do. So we have the Etsy backup.tar file. How do we actually convert that back to a folder? Well, what we're going to do is run tar, of course. And the dash X option, that stands for extract. We want to extract the contents of that tar file. And since we plan to work with a tar file, we have to give it the dash F option. And immediately after the F option, we have to give it the name of the tar file that we want to work with, which of course is Etsy underscore backup dot tar, at least in my case. So I'll press enter and it doesn't really look like anything has really happened. But actually the Etsy directory is back. So I was able to restore that directory. That's pretty cool. But again, like I mentioned earlier, I prefer the dash V option. So what I'll do is remove that folder yet again. We can see that it's gone. And I'll recall the previous command, the one that we used to extract it, which is this one right here. And I'll add the V option here, the dash V option. And you'll see me constantly put options in very specific places. The F option does indeed need to be at the end because you are providing a file name, but the other options, they don't have to be. 
This is just a habit for me. I always have the options in a particular order, and if you don't have a preference on your end, you'll probably come up with your own order as well. But all I really did was add the dash V option to this command. And we have the finish command right here. So when I press enter, you'll see that it printed a list of every single file that it extracted. So if you want to look at the output, you could do so with the dash V option. Now the end result, that's not going to be different at all because with or without the V option, it extracts the tar file. But I think you could probably at least begin to understand why the dash V option is something that I always use. And well, most of the time, I'm actually interested in the results of the command. I wanna know what it's doing. And the dash V option, like I mentioned earlier, gives me some information about what it's doing. Now let's move on to the gzip command. The gzip command allows us to compress a file. And that's very useful. Maybe we have a really large file and we wanna compress that. That allows us to save space. And that's especially useful if we have a server that's running out of space or perhaps we want to actually archive something in the smallest amount of space possible. In either case, the gzip command is a great way to do that. Now off camera, what I did was I took a backup of a Raspberry Pi SD card, and that's a very common thing to do. Now, of course, nothing that I'm going to show you right now is specific to the Raspberry Pi, but I wanted to have an example that was going to mirror what you guys are probably doing out there in the real world, and backing up an SD card, that's a very common thing to do. Another reason why I chose this particular example is because backups of SD cards can be quite large. Now, this isn't the largest one that I've ever seen. It's only two gigabytes, but that is a decent amount of space and we wouldn't want to waste that. So what I'm going to do is compress that image down to its smallest form. And to do that, I will use the gzip command. And actually, the basic usage of the gzip command is really simple. You only need to type gzip and then the file name. That's it. And what I'll do is press enter. And from there, the gzip command will compress that file. Depending on the size of the file, this could take a while though. I mean, some of my larger SD cards, I've had this take over an hour, but in this case, it didn't really take all that long. Now remember that before that particular image file was two gigabytes. Let's see how much it is now. It's down to 12 megabytes. That's a huge difference. Now, to be completely honest with you guys, that was not actually an SD card backup. That was just a random file that happened to be two gigabytes that I used as an example. And I named it this to give you an example of a real world scenario that you might use the gzip command for. So we're going to pretend that this is actually a Raspberry Pi SD card image, but in the real world, you will not see savings of, you know, two gigabytes down to 12 megabytes. That would be a nearly empty file because there just really wouldn't be anything to compress. But I have seen that Raspberry Pi SD card backups compress very well. And if you use the gzip command, you will save a considerable amount of space. So here we have a gzip file. How do we actually reverse the process? What if we actually need to use this file and we want to uncompress it? Well, for that, we actually have a dedicated command with gzip that we can use and that command is gunzip. And all we have to do is type gunzip. And then we type the file name that we want to uncompress. In my case, it's this one right here. And I'll press enter and the process begins immediately. Now this could take a while, especially if it's a very large file. This one shouldn't take all that long. Didn't take all that long last time to compress it. And it's done. If I list the storage, we can see that the SD card image or what I named as an SD card image is back to being two gigabytes. So now you've seen that you can compress a file with gzip and uncompress a file with gunzip. Now what I'm going to do is give you guys an example of combining gzip with tar. As I mentioned earlier, the tar command allows you to create an archive and that archive file can contain any number of files inside it. However, tar files, at least by default, are not compressed. They are an archive of files like a zip file, but think of the tar file as a zip file that's not zipped or a zip file that's not compressed. It's just a, you know, blob of files exactly as they are and you won't save any space. But if we combine the tar command with gzip, well, that's when it becomes quite clear the value of going over the two commands together. So what I'll do right now is I'll start over by removing the Etsy backup file. I definitely want to create a new version of that. So I'll just remove that one in particular, but we still have the Etsy directory and we also have the SD card image, 
But I'm going to go ahead and remove that because the future examples I'm going to go over, none of them actually require that file in particular, so I'll just remove it. Now let's see an example of creating a tarball of the locally copied Etsy directory, but also compressing it as well. So what I'll do is type tar and then dash C because what we're doing is we're creating a brand new archive file. And then I'll add the dash Z option, which you have not seen yet. And what the dash Z option allows you to do is compress the tarball. Now, I told you guys earlier that I'm going to show you the tar command combined with the gzip command, and this is it actually. Normally what you might think we would do is run the tar command and then pipe it into the gzip command. And yes, you can do that, but the dash Z option with tar is actually going to compress via gzip. And that prevents you from having to redirect one command into another. And this is a little bit unusual. There aren't that many commands out there that have a dedicated option that points to another command, but here we are with the tar command and the dash Z option legitimately corresponds to the gzip command. Anyway, continuing, we want to work with a file, whether we're creating one or modifying one. We'll use the dash F option. Then we'll provide the file name. And I'll create the file name as etsy underscore backup dot tar dot gz. Now we don't need file extensions, but this is standard practice. If a Linux administrator sees a file that's named something dot tar dot gz, then that individual will assume that it's a tarball that's been compressed by gzip. And that's exactly what I want to accomplish, so that's good enough for me. And then after that, I'll give it the path to the directory, which is the locally copied Etsy directory. And when I press enter, what it should do is create a tarball that's compressed with gzip. Let's see what happens. And that didn't take any time at all, did it? What we'll do is list the storage with ls-lh. And we can see that we have the etsy backup.tar.gz file right there. So using the dash Z option, we were able to use the gzip command as well. And when you combine those together, what we end up with is a compressed archive. What I'm going to do is remove that actually. And let's run that command again. But this time, I'm going to add the dash V option. So as you can see, I wasn't kidding when I told you guys that I used the dash V option whenever I used the tar command. When I press enter, you could probably guess what it's going to do. And you might be right. What the dash V option, verbose mode, does in this particular case is it actually shows you a listing of files as it compresses them. We've already seen this before. But we're seeing it now with the combined version of tar and gzip. And the end result doesn't actually change, but you could argue that it's useful to see the files that it's working with as it's working with them. If you have a lot of big files, this might be very useful. Now, when it comes to viewing the contents of a gzipped tar file, the command to do so is not actually any different. Just like before, we could type tar. We'll use the option dash tvf and then the name of the archive. As you can see here, it's printing the contents exactly the same way as it did before when we were working with a normal tar file. Even if the file is gzipped, the output of this command right here is, well, the same. We're able to view the contents of that compressed tar file with that command. And when it comes to extracting the file, that's the same as well. We could use tar with dash xvf, and then we can give it the name of the archive, which in my case is this one right here. I'll press enter. And it's going to actually copy over the Etsy directory that's local where I am right now. But you saw an example of extracting a gzip tar file, which is this example right here. Now, I'm going to stop this video right about here. I mean, there's a lot more options that we can go over, but this is more of an introductory series, and if there's additional options that I think constitutes another video, I'll go ahead and consider making that video. But for right now, you've actually seen some practical examples of the tar command and also gzip. As you just saw, together, they're a powerful force, a powerful team. One of them, you know, collects files into an archive file, and the other, can compress files. You could use tar and gzip completely independent of one another. So you can certainly gzip a file if that's all you want to do is compress it. But when combined with the tar command, well, you can see that they're quite a duo and it's really hard to talk about one without talking about the other. So let me know what you guys thought of this video in the comments down below. If you like this video, 
please click that like button. That lets YouTube know that you want to see more content just like this. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.